Have you thought about the future of work? Let's have an honest conversation, leader to leader, about the changes that have happened and the changes that are ahead of us right now. In a recent report from Microsoft, they studied 30,000 people in 31 countries. Sadia Nadella, the CEO, said over the past year, no area has undergone as much transformation as how we work. And more is coming. What's hybrid? It means working part of the time from home, part of the time at the office. And that sounds like the best of both worlds, but it's also the worst of both worlds. Because what it means is you don't really know who's going to be there on a given day. It means some of your team members are remote, you're sitting around the table having a meeting, but you're not all there. And have you ever been in a meeting when some people are in the room and some people are virtual? It's way worse than all being virtual because you're not on the same playing field. You have increased complexity in this hybrid world. Trust is challenged when we're not in the same room together and we can't pick up those subtle clues. We know that being on virtual meetings is exhausting, but virtual meetings, at least we're all in the same little windows. When some of us are in the little windows and some of us are in 3D, who's gonna have more access? Who's gonna have more voice? And how's it gonna feel for your level of engagement when you're all working in these different ways? The points in this report are pretty stunning. Number one, flexible work is here to stay. Number two, Managers are out of touch with employees and need a wake-up call. And number three, high productivity is masking an exhausted workforce. In terms of point number one, 66% of managers, 70% of employees are contemplating virtual. In terms of point number two, managers are having a very different experience and perception of the workforce than employees. And in point number three, we're seeing more and more reports about the emotional burdens of the pandemic and people feeling burned out, people feeling emotionally exhausted. They've been going through this marathon saying, we're gonna make it to the end. And then somebody keeps moving the goalposts. Unfortunately, we're not gonna reach a point where we can say, okay, now this crisis is over, we're back to normal. Maybe we shouldn't, maybe normal wasn't that good. But in any case, the world is changing and it's gonna to continue to change. And here's the thing that I'm most concerned about. The emotional complexity of these relationships, even before the pandemic, what managers told us in our surveys is that they were not prepared. 70% of the issues that they identified as the most pressing issues in their workplace were on the people's side around leadership, around trust, around communication, around building alignment and getting people working together. We add the magnifying effects of this rapid change that we're undergoing and the exhaustion that we're feeling right now as we do that. And what we have is this tsunami coming and we can see it coming, but we're not prepared for it. And most senior leaders are not investing to get ready for this crisis that's coming. When the pandemic started, suddenly we were faced with tremendous change. We didn't know about that in advance. We had to adapt quickly. But now we do know, we know this is coming. And are we gonna do the work that it takes to change our culture, to change our skills, to equip our people to deal with the workplace that's coming to us? One of the things that we found before the pandemic was that the skills of emotional intelligence were increasingly important in predicting high-performing leadership. I suspect that in this year's State of the Heart research, we'll find that's even more true. We'll find that under this increased complexity, we actually have an opportunity for leaders who have developed and are using emotional intelligence to stand out even more. In the face of all this complexity, it's like trying to swim upstream and the river's getting faster and faster. And somebody's throwing trees and rocks in that river. And we're still trying to move forward and achieve results with and through people. 
And in order to do that in this tremendous complexity, we're going to need to be better at connecting with ourselves and connecting with each other. We're going to need to be better at building authentic, trust-based teams where psychological safety allows us to have the conversations that we need to have, allows us to talk about what's happening when this person isn't in the room and these people are. We're going to have to have the ability to have the tough conversations that we weren't able to do before and now they're going to get tougher. So we're facing this incredible challenge, which is also an incredible opportunity. Companies that were investing in emotional intelligence before the pandemic were pulling ahead. Those who have a solid foundation now are positioned to move ahead in ways that are unprecedented. But if we're not taking this opportunity seriously, and we're not using this time that we have to prepare for the workforce that's to come, we're wasting that chance and we're throwing that value and that opportunity away. So leaders, it's time to stand up and say, our job is people and we need the skills that enable us to work well with and through people. We need the skills that allow us to handle the emotional complexity that we're facing now. Even in this time of exhaustion, we're gonna have to do better and be better at the people side of our job. And that's gonna bring us ahead as individuals and it's gonna move our companies ahead. If you wanna take advantage of the benefits of emotional intelligence for yourself or for your workforce, we have a micro training that you can use. Just sign up at the link shown on the screen and you're gonna build the skills that you need to get the practical applications of emotional intelligence that are gonna help you create value.